Who are you ready? Oh, I hope you're ready. You buckle up, got the seatbelt on? Oh, I hope so. Because we're going to be doing something that has yet to be done in this new setup. What is that, you may ask? Cracking a brand new bottle. And what is the brand new bottle? Oh, Macallan, 12 years old, triple cask, fine oak. An exquisite marriage of whiskey matured in European and American sherry seasoned oak casks and ex bourbon American oak casks. And that was a mouthful, but I will read that again in a moment. Now, if you're not familiar with this, so that's uh, in focus there. Uh, McAllen has done over the last couple of years, they've reintroduced a bunch of, uh, a bunch of 12 year old whiskeys. They used to have the 12 year old sherry in that uh, burgundy box, which was a great one. And then they decided to get rid of age statements and went over to the gold and the amber and the ruby and all that stuff. Most of it was junk. Uh, the ruby, one of the best scotches in a really long time. That stuff was really, really good. If you can still find one of those or if you happen to have one, hold on to that thing with both hands because that thing was a really, really good bottle. Um, also, when they first came back with the age statements, they first debuted the double cask, and you're probably uh, familiar with the 12 year old double cask, which I and uh, my friends and my cousin have had multiple times. That is one of the best uh, scotches by far that you can have always on tap, so to speak. Um, it is such an excellently balanced whiskey. It's a pretty decent price. It's from a known distiller. Uh, you can't really go wrong with that. Then eventually they came out with the 15. Uh, which I bought and I'm gonna have in another review very shortly so st uh, stick around to check out that one because I wanted to compare to see how much better is the 15 than the 12 but then they also decided to do the triple cask versus again double they decided to do the triple cask in the light blue boxes and this is akin to what they used to do with the fine oak series or the fine oak collection if you're familiar with that of what they used to do years and years ago so the triple cask again i will read it again it's considered fine oak uh, again just like what the old ones used to be fine oak versus the uh, double cask ones are just matured exclusively in the perfect balance of hand-picked sherry seasoned american and european oak casks so basically we're like what the sherry ones used to be these fine oak ones again uh, the notes right on the box citrus vanilla and fresh oak and again, it says it's an exquisite marriage of whiskey matured in European and American sherry seasoned oak casks and ex bourbon American oak casks versus the double cask ones. They're exclusively in sherry seasoned American and European. So the difference is that the triple cask has that finish in the ex bourbon um, and gives you the citrus vanilla and the fresh oak versus the 15, and I don't have a box of the 12 right now for the double, so the 15 has dried fruits, caramel, and vanilla. Just so you can see the difference in the color. Very similar, oops. Again, the triple, just a little bit lighter, more uh, grain-like, again, more kind of like the Bushmills you know, Red Bush, how it's a little bit more of that straw color versus this is a little bit more of that deeper caramel color. We'll put this aside for later. This guy on the back, the Macallan Triple Cask, matured 12 years old, reveals the unrivaled commitment to the mastery of wood and spirit for which the Macallan has been known since it was established in 1824. It is an expression of our enduring desire to go beyond ordinary, to seek out the extraordinary and create peerless single malts. And I really like that actually because they are some of the best. I definitely think they have very little peers uh, when it comes to making a really good malt. And yes, Macallan is kind of like that brand. Uh, I don't wanna, I'm going to just say it. it kind of people. A lot of people are just doing it because of the name. They're kind of a brand whore type of person. But Macallan really does make a really good whiskey. Uh, it's popular in pop culture. Harvey Specter, all those other people. It's popular for a reason because it's some of the best. Um, I like it along with my Balvenie collection. Um, I'll take either or, but my favorite scotch of all time is the Macallan 25. 
Uh, the Ruby is also another good one. Probably my second favorite Macallan was when they used to do the cask strength, if any of you remember that in the red box. Oh man, that bottle was to die for. I have hunted for that bottle so much over the years and just to think when I was really, really young and new into scotch, I could have had a bottle but I didn't know what cask strength meant and I thought it was garbage because it didn't have an age statement on it. So I passed. And then about a year or two later, I found out what it was and I got to have it at a, at a whiskey bar and it blew my mind. It absolutely rocked my world. It changed my outlook on whiskeys. Uh, so yeah, huge je m'appelle regret right here. Uh, I'll finish reading this. Uh, it is a uniquely complex combination of oak casks that delivers the extraordinarily smooth and delicate character of the Macallan triple cask matured 12 years old. A trinity of spirits matured individually in sherry seasoned European oak casks, sherry seasoned American oak casks, and ex bourbon American oak casks, and then exquisitely and expertly married together to create a vibrant single malt bursting with citrus fruits, vanilla, and fresh oak flavors. So, I think it's that time. Let's crack this sucker open. Definitely gonna have to go with the Glen Karen on this one. And I really hope that shotgun microphone's working because it's not very often you get to crack such a really nice bottle like this. Also, I don't really like these new Macallan bottles be as much as the old style ones because like you kind of got to twist them and then once you crack that seal, like this one here, you can never get it back down. I mean like it's closed obviously, but for people who have OCD kind of like me, you kind of wish you didn't have that gap there. But you can't, even if you twist it, there's like these barbs in there that you can't get it down. So there we go. Let's pop just like that. Oh. Just gotta let that soak in. Just do yourself a favor, skip back 10 seconds and listen to that again. Not bad. Can't really smell a lot there, but let's go ahead and do the pour. Really nice light straw color. Really inter interested to see. I had the 15 once of this at Highs a couple years ago, High Steakhouse, a really high end Canadian steakhouse. Um, I thought the 15 was very good and now the 15 triple cask, at least uh, about six months ago when I went on a Western Canada road trip, uh, it's like sold out everywhere. Like nobody has it. Uh, even when you go on websites, even in the States, I think like Total Wine, which is like the mecca of massive liquor stores, at least that I know of that are like nationwide or in a lot of good spots. The ones in Minneapolis are unreal. Um, nobody has it. The only place I found it was at a Costco liquor store in Regina of all places, but I already had bought so many bottles in Alberta, I, I couldn't literally spend any more money on another bottle of scotch, and I still kind of wish I did. Um, but I'm sure it's probably still there because who buys expensive scotch in Saskatchewan or Regina? Sorry, but had to go there. Blue Bomber fan right here. All right, let's do this. Very nice, very nice smell. Again, you know me, can't really pick out too many palates or smells uh, on the nose, on the nasal palate there. No burn at all. All right, down the hatch. It does remind me of the fine oaks. I had, uh, I'll insert the picture here. Last time I was in Minneapolis, back in January 2018, went to Total Wine, did a nice big run, got a couple of the, uh, I think I got the Edition 3 Macallan, which is my favorite edition of all time. I still have to try Edition 6 in the blue box. I've got a little sample of it in a nice vial that I've had for a couple months and I haven't cracked it open yet. And that's hopefully for an upcoming Scotch podcast with my partner in crime. Um, but anyway, I got that and I think I got the Fine Oak 10 and 15. So, this says the whiskey maker's notes here. Color, rich straw, check, we went over that. Aroma, complex with hints of vanilla, melon, and lemon zest. I kind of got the melon a little bit. 
I don't really got the lemon zest or the vanilla. The palate is a medium balance with lemon citrus, vanilla, and light toasted oak and nutmeg. Yeah, I can kind of taste the nutmeg. That little swish, that's for the tea guy on, on Whiskey Tribe. That's for you, buddy. Finish the lingering with melon, papaya, fresh oak, and oak spice. I just noticed the oak and oak spice. Um, overall, yeah, I'd say this is a pretty hell of a pretty good hell of a whiskey. I do think I prefer the double wood more just because I think it's a little bit more complex. But like, if you can have both, it's definitely worth having both in the collection. You can't go wrong for having both of these. I would definitely say this is a buy. I guess that's definitely a buy. Because anyone who's at like a serious or semi-serious scotch collector, they're going to be big into McAllen and they're going to want to get these. So try and pick up that triple, the 12 and the 15. I believe the 15 was supposed to get reintroduced into the North American market after being sold out for a while. Unless you're living in Regina and you can go to the Costco. 